Hey guys, 8 Josh here, and welcome back to another Planet Coaster Console Edition basic tutorial where today we're going to take a look at paths. And uh, just like the PC version, the paths can be a, a bit confusing. And while the game does do a good job of displaying the different options and the buttons to use it, there's still a few other things that could maybe be a bit confusing if you're not familiar with the game. So I thought that I we would go ahead and go through that here today. So we're starting from the simple little entryway we made in the last video, and we're just going to keep going with our path out this way. So we have a few different options here. We'll go ahead and scroll down. So we have our path menu open already, and you have several different options. You can change the length of the path that you're currently placing. So you can see there it can make it up to five pieces, which I think it's like kind of square, like grid pieces. And then you can make it wider as well, all the way up to 10 meters in width. You have your angle snap, which I, I've spent a fair amount of time in the game already, but I, f I, I feel like angle snap is on by default. And all that means is you get these kind of more uh, perfect, like little movements with the path where if you turn it off, you get these like you get a more fine tuned movement works exactly the same way as if you're like building pieces or building a roller coaster. The angle snap just allows you to when it's off, it gives you a little bit more freedom to move the piece that you're currently working with. Uh, but usually I like to keep it on unless I need to like really uh, do some fine tuning with the movement. If you have angle snap on, which we do, you can also adjust how much you want it to actually move. So like, for instance, if we have it all the way to 90 degrees, you can only move it in 90 degree increments. But we'll go back to the default, which is the 15 degrees. Now let's place a couple couple pieces here. Now path joining, what this means is so if we exit out of the piece, and you can see we have we have our we could start a new path here if we want uh, path joining on is on by default. And all that means is if you're building a kind of a second path up to an existing path, it will automatically connect like that. Whereas if you turn it off, you can see right here it, it will not connect to the existing path. But again, the path joining is on by default. Now, while you're in the path menu, if you, you as it says at the bottom, you can do L1 or R1 to change the tab. You have a lot more settings over here in the uh, more settings tab, because that's pretty obvious, right? You could do co curved slopes on or off. And that's, you know, that's exactly what it says. So if you hold down a square to do a slope, you can do that and you can create stairs. And then if you just move, you can create some nice little uh, curved slopes. You can do a nice little curved stairs if you want. You can make yourself a nice little kind of like a like a nice little curved stairway, for instance, up to maybe you have like another little ride. You could do something like that. It looks really nice. Uh, I typically like to have it off by default. So when you're building a slope, it doesn't just like you know, it it will if you move the L, the left stick at all, it will just automatically uh, cause it to rotate. And I just it's more of a personal preference. I just prefer it to not do that unless I want, you know, a specifically want uh, some curved slopes. Flattened terrain is nice. That's pretty self-explanatory, too. That just flattens the terrain underneath the path. Tunneling also very. Uh, very obvious what it does again, say you have like a, a big hill or a mountain that you've made and you don't want to build a path all the way around it. You want the guests to be able to just go straight through. So you just do tunneling on and that will uh, just automatically dig out the terrain around the path. Again, path supports pretty simple. They, these are only for elevated paths, though. So if we uh, make ourselves like a nice little elevated path here, we'll go up a couple like that. So when you place it, you can see the little supports down there. 
and the, the longer you make it, the more supports it will uh, place. Well, if you turn it off, and you can see it doesn't place any supports underneath. And this is this is nice for, uh, again, kind of more, I guess, advanced building. But if you, uh, you know, you want to put your own supports down there or, you know, maybe you have like a ride, like a roller coaster that kind of ducks down under the path. Uh, maybe you don't want the the default path there. So or the default uh, support there. So that's that's another option you can do as well. So we'll go back down here. Curb on ground is kind of is this piece that you see kind of outlining the path here for the sandstone path. It's kind of the wood piece there. But if you turn it off and then you get this kind of just really nice flush uh, path here. Again, maybe for more advanced builds, but if you want to do your own custom um, curb around there, you could do that as well. Like, say, let's go, let's go to create over here. You know, you could do something really simple, like maybe just take the classic brick wall right here. Place that there. Maybe sink it down a little bit. And, you know, you could do you could do something really, really simple just like that. You know, like I said, it's very simple, but it's very effective. So if you want to do, you know, your kind of own curbs or if you want to do some fences, uh, things like that, uh, removing the curb on the paths can definitely be uh, very useful. And I use it quite a bit in my own builds. Railing on ground. Again, if we go back to. We'll bring our curbs back here. Uh, it's the same same exact concept. So railing on ground path. So what that does is it just puts the kind of default railing around the path and different path types have different railings. So if you kind of just scroll through the different path types, you can see all the different uh, railings that are available. So, you know, maybe in certain cases you want the default railing, maybe others you uh, you don't want it. Railing on elevated is same exact thing. Uh, so you, if you have an elevated path, you can uh, choose to have the railing on on the elevated part of the path or not. And then same thing for railing on ground queue. So if you go over here to your queue paths, you know, you have a path over there. So you can see the railing on the queue right there. One thing that has always been missing from this game and I really, really wish they would add it is on elevated paths, the ability to uh, the ability to remove the curbs on elevated paths. So here we'll we'll turn railing off. So you can see the curb there on the elevated path uh, there. There is no way to remove that unfortunately it's probably one of my most requested features uh, unfortunately i don't think we'll get it at this point but uh you never know maybe maybe they'll make that update for the console edition now if you want to uh kind of you want your path and maybe you have uh you know you want it to lead off into a different direction so you could do this you could place it there uh, and then kind of curve it and you can go out that way and it's like that looks okay but what if you want like a more kind of like a really nice sharp uh, sort of fork in the uh, path there well a nice way to do that is say start out over here place it like this and then you connect it up like that and then you get this really really nice kind of uh, nice, nice little angled offshoot path there now you could do if you want uh, we'll come down here, place it again. Uh, this setting down here, enter at right angle. So this being off allows you to get this really nice uh, kind of forked path right there. If you turn it on, what it does is creates this like kind of like little curve bit before it attaches to the path. Um, you know, some cases it looks good, like right there looks pretty good. Uh, maybe not over here so much. But this is why you'll want to turn enter at right angle off and then you get that nice little like I said, nice little offshoot right there and it looks really good. 
Now, what if you want to make like a, a nice little plaza at the front of your park? You know, a lot of amusement parks have that kind of big plaza as soon as you walk in. So there are a few ways you can do that as well. So you might be in your settings and you, you see this, uh, you see this setting here that's grayed out. You can't change it. It's called square edges. It says have a grid selected to enable square paths. In order to do that, hold, bring up your radial menu holding triangle and you're going to do select grid. And what this does is just like if you were uh, building a building like our little entrance building there, uh, it brings up a little uh, kind of theoretical grid. And then once you select it, you can create these nice little plazas. Now, if you want it to be squared, since we have our grid available, you can do square edges on. And if we delete the, delete these end pieces, and then there you go, you can see we have, it creates these nice little square path pieces. And allows you to just create some really nice kind of like, like I said, like little plaza areas. And then another cool thing you can do is if you want some, you know, maybe you want some scenery kind of like in the middle of the path. What you can do is maybe delete two pieces like that. And then you're left with that, those two little open bits. And then you can do something, you know, again, like really simple, like, you know, like I said, going back to like our uh, brick building piece here, you know, maybe we'll place that, we'll place that there. Since we're kind of going with the tropical theme here, so we'll we'll go back down here to tropical. You know, maybe we'll 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 place a couple of these around here, kind of kind of over top like that. So you get this kind of nice overgrowth uh, kind of look to it. Uh, let's get some let's get some trees in here. Like we'll do one of these palm trees. This guy looks pretty good. You know, maybe we want this one kind of kind of going over the path like that. You know, we can do, we'll do another one like this, Let's sink him down, make sure he's, looks like he's actually growing out of that. And then we have this nice little blueprint here, which we have it selected. And if we want, you know, you could go up here, duplicate advanced move, like we showed you in the last video. And then we could just move it over here and we could have another one kind of get a little fine tune. I think maybe let's, let's rotate it some too. You know, we don't we don't want it to be exactly the same. And if we wanted, we could really uh, we could delete the palm tree in this one and then maybe put in a different palm tree. But so that's a, a fairly simple way that you can do a kind of plaza for your guests. You know, I just kind of I just kind of made this like really, uh, really quickly right now. Uh, you can obviously do again more ad kind of advanced stuff, really, really detailed stuff. Uh, but because this is a sort of beginner's guide, uh, I wanted to just, you know, do the real, real kind of basics. OK, so now we're going to talk about uh, cute paths here a little bit. So uh, I already placed a, a ride down here. This is the Tri-Storm and we're going to Again, go back to our paths. We're going to tab over to our queue. And just like the regular paths, you have different options here. I think I'm going to go with the arrow queue path this time. So we're just going to kind of place this around. We're going to kind of make it a little bit of a longer path because uh, we're going to also talk a little bit about priority passes. And I want to make sure that our queue is long enough so there you go. We have a very simple, it's a little janky right there in the turn, but that's okay. And then if we want to go back, you know, maybe let's do, let's do our grid again. We'll kind of expand our plaza here. You know, we could kind of bring it out to right here. And then we can just connect the exit of the ride right there. Now for priority passes, in order to use those, first you have to select the ride you want it to, you want to use it on. And you go over here and then just go down and do enable priority pass. 
And then when you go over to the queue that you already built, it will automatically give you the option to start building your, your priority pass queue. Now these can only be placed from a queue. You can't have like a pr priority pass coming off of a regular path. It has to start from a queue. So we'll place it there because you want it as close to the front as possible. Uh, the game actually doesn't let you do it too close to the actual entrance right here. Uh, so about right here is as close as that we'll be able to uh, get it to the front. And if we scroll over here, then you can see we have the exit of the priority pass. And this, you're going to want to put it as close to the ride as possible. Now, just like the uh, the entrance to the priority pass queue, uh, you can't get it too close to the ride. So we're going to put it there. And then that automatically gives brings us to the path again. And then what you want to do is you'll just connect these together. Now, what this does is this allows guests who buy a priority pass uh, to skip all of this queue right here and then they can actually queue here and they'll get in uh, a lot sooner. Now in order for your guests to actually use the priority passes uh, they have to buy those and the only place that they can buy them is in the info booth and because we're kind of going with the tropical pirate theme we're gonna just select the, this pre-made blueprint right here because it'll fit very nicely. Maybe we'll we'll try and we'll try and get it as close over here as possible. There you go. And that looks pretty good right there. So you have your information booth. You're going to want to select it. And here you can see your priority pass options. You can adjust the price. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You can obviously you can disable it or turn it enable it if you want. Uh, but the price is for all priority passes in your park. So uh, this the price you're going to want to set this to needs to be directly related to how many rides you have that are using the priority pass queue. If you only have one ride in your whole park uh, that's using the priority pass, you're probably not going to want that to be set to ten dollars because the, the guests won't think that there's enough value. Uh, so the, the more rides you have that use it, uh, the more you can uh, charge for the priority pass, but just something to keep in mind uh, to make sure to just kind of adjust the price depending on how many rides are actually using it. So, you know, maybe in this case, at the moment, we only have one ride. So let's, you know, let's knock this down to like, like two bucks. I think that's a pretty good price. And another thing you can do with the queues is you can kind of do the classic uh, kind of cattle pen style queue and it works the same way as basically creating the grid that we used for the regular path. So you have your queue option open here and let's go back to there. All you're going to do is hold triangle, do select grid and then you can do very simple things like this. You can create a nice little cattle pen style queue now to this part looks a little uh doesn't look quite right because you have the railing on there and it kind of creates two railings uh so to work around that we're gonna turn railing on ground queue off and we'll just kind of go back around and kind of replace the path but this time it places it without the railing and then just like I showed you before, you can do stuff like take a take a wall piece, but you can do things like this kind of place this guy. Maybe we'll go to the advanced move here so we can get some more fine fine tune our movement. We'll kind of get that right in the middle right, right about there. And then there you go. We have a nice simple uh, little wall that kind of just separates both paths. And then if you want, you can select your building. We'll do duplicate advanced move. Move that guy over there. Kind of like that. And then there you go. You can kind of see how you can get like a uh, kind of your classic cattle pin queue. You know, if you want to build your walls kind of 
or fences or railings or whatever you want to build kind of just all around the outside you get that really really nice effect and uh just that really nice classic like i said cattle pen uh style cue so there you go you guys i hope you enjoyed this uh super quick and basic uh tutorial on how to set up paths and plazas and queues and priority passes hopefully you found it useful if you have any comments questions or feedback feel free to leave them down below if there are some other tips you would like to see me cover in a video like this be sure to let me know that as well and uh yeah that'll do it so with that i am a bit josh and thanks for watching see ya